Hey everyone, welcome back. We are gonna be working on some more complex carousel paging techniques. And what I really wanted to do from last video was to take what we learned about creating like an active state here, where we created like a little bit of a focus state and then after we transitioned back to the active state, I'll show you what it looks like again. So we had that little bit of intermittent pause there and then we moved to this white state. Now I want to take that a bit further for you all. What happens if this little circle is not just transitioning by like opacity and changing the fill? What happens if this circle is a constant thing? It is the active state that moves constantly between all the other circles. So what I'm gonna do today is I'm gonna show you how to animate this to make it look like it's like a bubbly ball, a ball that's bouncing between all these different circles where it's supposed to be, all these different states. One thing that I can do though, is let you know that we're gonna make sure this ball moves between all these states and you know teach you how to actually animate a little ball in Figma and keep it as simple as possible because it will get a little bit complex with the amount of screens we need and also bring in this secondary state right here as well. So what I like to do sometimes just to keep track of colors, you can press R to bring up the rectangle tool. It's up there, it's already active for me. So I'm gonna hold down shift and create a couple of squares and duplicate those squares. So I command C, command V, and then do that again. Okay, so we have our three squares and then I'm gonna press I to get all the colors I need from these squares. So just in case I need to reference them instead of just going back to the individual layers. Now, one thing I wanna do is, you know, we're gonna keep this really simple again. Let's just do two because it will get complex pretty quickly. So the, for the first step, what I wanna do is, let's start on the left side. Seems just much more natural to start with number one. And we are gonna create a duplicate over here. Perfect, that's fine. And I want you all to try and do this as I am doing it as well, just to get into the habit of creating more screens and the habit of animating all these different little elements. It could really help you and just doing it more and more is gonna speed up your workflow. So let's think about all these different steps it's gonna to take to get from here to here. And when I think about it, I wanna also think about what I envision with a ball that is being animated or thrown from one side to the other. Cause I want this ball to go boom, boom, back and forth when I click. I don't wanna just slide cause I'll do that right now. Let's actually show you what it looks like if we just create that little animation. So if I click on this second button, I'm going to have to make this one the state in between. And then if I create another screen, I'm gonna just drag that over like that. This can go back to the normal color. So, and we can just drag that over. So that is pretty simple. And I'll show you what that's gonna look like. So I'm gonna go and bring that one over. Let's do 150 milliseconds. And then from here, we're gonna do like the after delay that we had in the other video. So we have an after delay of 150. We'll just keep it like that for now. So if we look at our second flow, so that's pretty cool. I mean, we have a ball that's actually sliding across now, but one thing I don't like about it is it just doesn't feel natural. Like when I think of a ball and I whip it against the wall or if I throw it to a person, that ball changes sometimes depending on the type of ball it is. If it's a squishy ball, if it's a ball that is maybe like a water balloon. If I think about a water balloon in particular, it will change its shape as it's being thrown. You can think of it as much more squishier. So if I actually go back in my design panel here, if I think about this ball, when it hits a wall, it's gonna squish like that. When it's, when it's moving really fast, it may actually look something like this, like squish, like moving like this, kind of like a torpedo. So we're gonna have to apply some of those same types of principles 
over to this as well. So what we're going to do is let's actually just delete uh, these lines here now that you have a good understanding of what we're looking for. So when I click this button, maybe that's when we actually, you know, start our little squishy movement. I have this set to, I think that's 18. That's perfect. So we have 18 and that's the active state. And then what's going to happen is, let me get this going. And we can actually just, if I hold down option, I can make that move like this. So that's perfect. And we are just going to stretch this just a bit like that. So that's kind of where it's going to end up. Let me grab this color because it's still kind of the active state that we're in. So it's going to shoot from here. It's going to squish, boom, fly to the other side. We can even make another one over here. And if we think about when a ball does hit a wall, it kind of, you know, shrinks a little bit as well, depending on how hard you throw that ball to the wall. So I have it set to 19 and we can do 20. That's totally fine as well. So it's going to lose some momentum. And then we have our final state like this. We'll just move this over like that. So that's kind of what we're looking for. So we have the click state and we have it showing that it's active, like it's focused. We clicked it. It's given our user enough information as to, okay, we've actually interacted with it. Now the ball is starting to wind up for a throw and it's got its momentum. It's going, it hits the wall and then boom, it hits the wall and then we can actually make this a little bit smaller like that. It hits the wall and then goes back to normal. So let's actually link this up so we can see if this is something that's going to work. Oops. Let's remove that starting point. Okay. So we click on this. It goes to there 150. Let's just keep it at 150 for now. And then this is kind of where we're going to have to do some after delay stuff. So we have after delay at 150. After delay again, 150. And then I think we can actually shorten it over here in terms of the, the time. Instead of 150, it's 100 because there's not much that's happening in between this little part and this part. All it's doing is this is kind of going back to the normal size of the ball and we're kind of losing the fill over here. So the fill is going to be going back to that color. So we don't need a whole 50 extra milliseconds. Okay. So let's take a look at what this looks like. Now we're going to restart it. Oh my goodness. That was pretty cool. That was on our first try. So let's try it again. Boom. And there you go. You kind of have like your little animation of a ball going back and forth. Now in the prototype that you have, you have going between three. Let's actually just kind of go back and do it for the other one as well. So we have some good back and forth motion that we can just play with. So I'm going to duplicate that frame, do the same thing here. I'm going to start actually creating the frames that we want. And the great thing about this is now that you've done it once and you've practiced in terms of what you want it to come out like when it comes to timing, the type of animation, then the rest just kind of flows together. You don't need to really think too much. You're kind of now just going through the motions of having your designs the way you like them much more easily. So this was 29 width and 18 height. So I'm just going to bring that down to 18 height. Oops, that's 16. We can bring that into 18. Perfect. And let's just go to 29. Oops, that's a little too long. Perfect. And then let's get back to this state where it is 
18. And then it goes back to the normal height of 24. Okay, and now we can just kind of link these together as well. So if I click this one, that's gonna go there. So remember, it's gonna just automatically take the previous animation and put it there. So I had 100 set because that was the last one I did. So just remember to change that. After delay, boom, one millisecond after delay. And again, and that's perfect. And then the last one is gonna be 100 milliseconds. Just remember that. I always find it's incredibly helpful to have a sheet of paper beside me while I'm doing much more complex things, which we'll get into as well. But having a sheet of paper beside you really helps you mark down or at least list what you're doing when it comes to animations. You can even write it over here, kind of like how I have this little cheat sheet of colors if I don't wanna turn them into like styles to reuse. But that I find helps so much for keeping myself sane when I'm trying to keep track of different types of timings. Okay, let's take a look at what we have. Oh goodness, that is beautiful. And that starts to feel a much more exciting than something like this. This is really nice and subtle. And this is kind of, I feel like this is actually perfect for like 90% of scenarios. I mean, you could you can make an argument that this is like, you know, something very extra, but I think it's really helpful when you're thinking about certain types of brands that could really use different types of animations like this. If I'm thinking about things like brands that could use something like this, I think of things like Facebook and the way they've implemented something like reactions and the way that pop-up menu pops up, the way you hover over an icon or a different type of reaction and that kind of comes up and animates itself. So Definitely there is usefulness when it comes to animating little things like we did with navigations previously, but this is super cool to be done in Figma and it really didn't take us long to kind of get used to how to do it. And there is your ball going back and forth and it adds a little bit of polish, a little bit of excitement and something that you can definitely apply to a lot of different designs when it comes to paging and or carousels or even other elements you could probably think about like buttons and forms. So this is great. I would love to see what you all come up with when it comes to using paging or carousels or this type of real life animation because it is certainly possible in Figma.